Hello everybody, it's Carol at Big Cat Rescue. That was Joseph Lyon, who was roaring when I first fired this up, but it takes me so long to get it up and running that I missed it again. <sighs> Sorry about that. Tell you what, <laughs> I would never make it as an actress. Hi, who's sleeping there? Is this Sleepy Tiger? We're doing a 360 video and how we hey Amanda how we wrote this great script it's got to be five minutes long and it's me talking about how the sanctuary started and talking about some of the cats which is stuff I know right but because he's written it in his own words I cannot get it straight for anything and poor Afton <laughs> we were out here with her feeding the cats and me trying to read my lines or remember my lines and not screw them up and it was horrible. Those cats ate all morning long <laughs> they're full as they can be. So I'm on my way to see some of the other cats that we were not working with. It's to probably need to get their evening meds and snacks. Thought you guys might want to come along. Can you guys hear Gabrielle calling in the background there? She's way down at the end of vacation rotation. <sighs> it's a chilly one today. It is 64 degrees. So, <laughs> thank you, Beth, for the cute hat. I love the cute hat. It's keeping me nice and warm. It's got these cute paws, the little hearts on the bottom. I've always said that we should make cat hats part of our uniform here. I just love the little cat ears. Our volunteers are not so keen on that. Is Cameron going to roar now? Was he thinking about it? Maybe. Got to get up high to roar. Is that what you're going to do? Indeedy. Definitely not impressed. Hi, 
Hi, Becky. Well, I'm guessing since Mama Becky is watching this video, she's not who I'm looking for today. Because <laughs> she wouldn't have her hands free if she were doing evening meds and snacks. Hi, Cuddly. <laughs> were you playing with this ball? Was it fun? Was it so fun? It was so fun. They love to put their balls in the pool. They roll better in there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's, it's chilly. It's your kind of weather though, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Oh, big John. We're on Facebook. Later on, if I get a chance, it'll be on YouTube. Right now, my computer is all consumed with trying to edit together the pieces of the video that I was telling you about earlier, the 360 video that I did such a messed up job with. I bet each line that I did, I must have had to do five different takes. Hey, Artemis. Beautiful Artemis. Oh, you guys got to see this. I hope I don't lose you. I'm going to go in the building. I don't know if anybody has gone live with baby cakes in his own office, but it's adorable. Afton was showing me all of her battle wounds from building the cage. They wanted him to have a, a much bigger space than what would fit through the doors of the mobile home. So they had to build the cage inside the room. And because they were inside the room, these big panels of sharp edged wire, there's just no room to move. And so she was all cut up from it, but she did a really nice job. That little window on the right is the bathroom and the next window is baby cake's window. So you can see the windows open. So you can be looking out the window here. Hey, baby cakes. I don't think your office door is supposed to be open. They don't want him and Narla getting to meet each other. That could be not good. Afton said earlier, welcome to the movie theater because it smells like buttered popcorn in here. That's how African civets smell. Karma's at oh, your office. There's Mark. <laughs> hi. Is his door oh, supposed to be open? Yes. Um, I, I, if he supervised. Oh, okay. If, um, if, if someone's in the office, it's okay. But look at his setup. He's just doing wonderful. I see a tail coming out of the, <laughs> of the little hutch. And, um, but I've discovered that he's more active as the sun goes down, and I think that's kind of... Oh, yeah, they're indicative. definitely nocturnal. Can we watch you sleeping in there? But he seems quite happy with his, with his new setup. <laughs> There's his cute little face. You love it? They love it. Baby Cakes, this is your, your chance to meet all of our Facebook friends. All right. Well, I knew you guys would love to see this setup that he's got. Well, he is just, oh, now he, he, we might have woke him. I'm not sure. I saw him move, a uh, tail moved. You can come out? He's like, what is I that on your head? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got a purple cap on your head. <laughs> I don't know about that. Oh, um, maybe we're just repositioning. But he just, he just seems so happy. He loves the open window. And he will climb up to the middle shelf of the cat tree. Oh, good. I heard he had gotten into the bottom basket there. Yes. And so he's kind he's of working his there. way, exploring. <laughs> and he just seems like he likes it. Well, now all we see are spots. <laughs> ah. Well, he's got a, his own cabinet for all of his things. <laughs> and so he is just, we're just... 
he's taken over <laughs> and we've got his temporary sign um, right here but he's going to have his own he is our new office manager <laughs> So we are happy that he's here. And actually, Narla the cat doesn't mind him much. Well, here good. she is right here. Hi, Nyla. And she says, oh, <laughs> as long as I don't have to share my toys and food, I'm good. Well, she's got plenty of toys, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, best toys bags. Bags are always the best toys, aren't they? Yeah, well, she has all these very nice toys, and we, we still like bags, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. I'll see you later. I think when we get all caught up, I'm going to ask Jamie to enclose this porch so that we have a double door system because this makes me nervous that she might escape there and end up out here with all of her big cat friends who are not her friends. Yeah, Baby Case has been here like 20 years. Um, trying to remember, well, he's got a page. So if you go to bigcatrescue.org slash babycakes, you should be able to find his, his page and see when he arrived. And he was an adult when he arrived, so we had to guess the age. He was found wandering loose in the neighborhood. He's native to Africa, so <laughs> he didn't belong in Largo, Florida, where he was running around loose. And the dog catcher got him and said he was not eating well because of all the barking dogs and everything. So we went and got him, even though he's not a cat. He's cat-like. He's like cats do. So... He's been here, like I said, for probably close to 20 years. Did I miss evening meds and snacks? You, I have one cat left. One? Who? That guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like having 10 of any other cat. <laughs> I need tongs. guys are in luck. It's Manny. Manny Jaguar. Yeah, he always does Sneaking that a little, up on her. <laughs> a early, so I think she went out to do the Zeus because he's on new mix. Good job getting those fluids in there. Yeah, him. I told her. All we gotta do is just give him some scratches. He'll do whatever <laughs> you want. Zeus has been feeling bad and so they weren't able to get him to eat his pills like he should, so they wanted to get some injections into him and careful. Aspen had suggested scratching him with a long stick so that he was not Ugh. paying attention hey. to the needles. And oh, you have They one. got all his drugs in him. You little meat hoarder. <laughs> he likes to like hide them from everybody. Like, ooh, a chicken. She can't get it now. Good boy. If I come over here, I'm getting my shadow on you. A good dog. So why is he getting fed twice a day? Um, they thought he could put a little weight on. Maybe he won't be so crazy. I don't know if that's the solution. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be a good solution. <laughs> Just feed him until he doesn't care anymore. <laughs> but especially like in the, the cooler months, the some of them are more active and he's always run around and out and about. So he metabolizes a lot faster. Because Jinx is on him, Beecher's on him. All the younger active cats. <laughs> <laughs> All five of them. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, we just dropped off food for Sue and Lakota, too. <laughs> the young cats. I like that you're chewing it. Good boy. You got it? That's it. You wait, you're the stash. All right. All right. Nice work, Manny.
Yeah. I don't want it back. I don't even like it when it's not cooked, so. <laughs> Let's go see if we can find Cyrus and Chaos. Haven't seen them in a while. First, I gotta figure out where the gate is over here. I'm pretty sure you'll see both Manny and Zebu no matter what time of year you're coming. <laughs> They're always out. Well, Manny's always out. Um, sometimes Zebu, when it's hot, goes in her den, but most of the time she's out. Are you over here with Beecher? Diane, thank you for donating. He's uh, wondering why Beecher got snacks and he didn't. I'll tell you, it's because you're chunky. Yeah. You don't need snacks. That's why you didn't get snacks. Only skinny cats need snacks. <laughs> Dip up in the chin. Did you look over the chin? Some people would see that kind of activity and think, oh, he wants to be petted. No, that's not what he's saying. <laughs> what he's saying is, this is my space. I'm going to mark it. Just so you understand, this is my space. You don't come into my space. My space might actually still be around if you were their spokesman, though, because you're so cute. Who wouldn't want to be on my space if you were the spokesman? for giving us that caracal sound. That's a very cool caracal sound. Most of us who have spent years around the cats Im imitate them in some way, <laughs> in our way. And even though we may not be good imitators of them, we can kind of get close when it comes to purring and chuffing and some of the noises the cats make. But caracals, they make the most impossible trill that, that, I can't, see what I mean? <laughs> I can't even get close to what that sound is like. Feature. <laughs> oh, where are you going, buddy? I'm on the brow. Feature is a savannah cat, which is a cross between a serval and a domestic cat. It's a really stupid thing to do. Because what people want is a cat that's very exotic looking and uses a litter box and eats cat food. And what they get is usually, <laughs> you can't see her face, a pretty ordinary looking cat that wants to kill its own food and wants to spray urine all over the house because that's how they mark territory. Yes, Pam, he does look more like a serval than our other savannah cats do. He's probably a first generation savannah cat, whereas the other hybrids are probably second or third generation. So 
they don't look as circly. Hi there. And there's Miss Chaos, actually over here close to Cyrus, which never happens. Yeah, you never want anything to do with Cyrus. I don't know if we're going to be able to see you. When we rescued them, they were being kept together because the lady was trying to breed caracals, of course. Which is the reason people get these animals. They try to make a profit off of them. And so the first thing we did was separate them because we don't believe in breeding wild cats for life in prison. And we fixed them and we thought, well, since they've been together their whole lives, they might want to be back together. And we let them back together and she beat the snot out of them. So <laughs> I don't know if... If this is her saying, yeah, I'd like to try that again. Or if it's just a coincidence that she happens to be laying over here by the tunnel. Because he's not over here by the tunnel right now. So we'll keep an eye on that and see if they want to try it again. Is it sleepy? Sleepy chaos. Matthew, thank you for posting that link about why we don't breed. Some people mistakenly think, since these animals are so rare and so many of them are endangered, that it must be a good thing to breed in captivity, right? Because we want to save the species, and the answer is wrong. <laughs> we don't want to save the species if saving them means saving them in prison, because they don't want to be in prison, and they shouldn't have to be in prison just because people want to be able to see them. What we need to be doing is protecting their habitat and saving them in the wild where they belong. And unfortunately, I believe the reason that so many of these cats are in so much trouble is because people will spend their money doing exploitive things like handling cubs and having their pictures made with cubs or going to zoos and seeing animals in cages. And instead of sending that money into conservation in the wild, they're squandering it on selfish uses of the animals. So we think the best thing for saving these animals in the wild, which means saving our entire planet because we need forests and we need wild spaces where cats can roam free. I'm sorry, I don't have anything, Frosty. I don't have a thing. No, I'm looking for the Frosty cat. See, my hands are empty. <laughs> like, well, if your hands are empty, I've got no use for you. I think the very first step to saving these animals in the wild and saving the planet is ending the private possession of them so that the only way people can see them is in the wild so that then people care enough to save those wild spaces. It's hard to get people excited about saving a tree which we need for oxygen, and if we cut down all the trees and pave them over with pavement, we're not going to have air to breathe. But we can get people excited over saving the cats, because they're beautiful. And you can't save the cats without saving their environment. Yeah, that must be the nicest gate we have. <laughs> It was the easiest gate to get through. I didn't break a nail like I did just a minute ago. I really hate our gates. We have so many other priorities that building gates are not usually one of them. And that was Howie telling me that I need to be heading home soon because we have a lecture to go to. Hello, my beauty. Will you let me be this close? Would that be okay? <clears throat> so I'm going to position this so I can jump back if I have to. Because you're young and strong and not keen on me being this close. This is Natalia. She's an Amore Leopard.
Yeah, Luana's not kidding. Servals and Caracals both are the hissiest of the cats. And they can be hissing and purring at the same time, so you can't really take them too seriously. Look at that light on her whiskers. I love that. They're glistening. You have glistening whiskers. Try and say that three times real fast. Yeah, her um, bio page is bigcatrescue.org slash nat because when we got her from the zoo, we didn't know what her full name was. <laughs> Everybody had been calling her Nat for so many years that that was what we made her page here, but her full name is Natalia. She's very beautiful, just like she is. <laughs> Cindy says that Nat Natalia is one of the next cats on her list to draw, and that the reason she hadn't done it, she had said earlier, was because Natalia's always making faces which she does. <laughs> Look at you in your den. That's precious, Cricket. Are you soaking in the sun? Yeah, this is perfect. Perfect. This is Cricket. Cricket was a pet. Didn't work out for you either, did it? Never does. Never does. People are crazy if they think they can make you into a pet. Uh, Marlene, I think you spelled Cricket's name wrong there. Mike and Kathy Sizemore, the big cat walkabout this year, or Safari Days as it's listed on our website. It's going to be November 3rd, I think. It's the first Saturday in November. And what we're trying to do, since November 4th is our anniversary of the sanctuary, is to make our wildcat walkabout the closest Saturday to whatever that date is. So it's probably always going to be like the first Saturday in, yeah, I guess it would always be the first Saturday in November, because that's always going to be the closest to the 4th. Marissa, thank you for calling your rep. This is a real good time for me to talk about that. So the best way to end the private possession of big cats is to get the laws changed in the first place. And the only way that we're going to do that is for people in the U.S. to contact their member of Congress and ask them to champion the Big Cat Public Safety Act. So we make it really super simple for you. If you go to bigcatact.com, type in your information, your name and address, it will actually dial your rep for you. You don't have to know who your rep is. The system knows. And when the phone starts, when your phone starts ringing, then as soon as somebody answers, which usually is going to be an answering machine, but as soon as somebody answers, all you have to do is say, please ask your boss to champion the Big Cat Public Safety Act. And that text is right there at bigcatact.com, so you can write it down. Please ask your boss to champion the Big Cat Public Safety Act. And that is so important. Just making one call is like the equivalent of sending a couple of hundred emails. So that's why we ask people to call and not do petitions or even emails on this one because it's too important. We need to get this law passed. Oh, Pam says she always gets a real person. Some people are fine with talking to real people. Other people like me are shy. I, I call and talk to my real person, but in my case, our rep is already co-sponsored, so there's no reason for me to be constantly haranguing her since she's already a co-sponsor. You can find out whether or not your member of Congress is a co-sponsor by going to bigcatrescue.org slash house, H-O-U-S-E, and it will have a list of the people who are already co-sponsors, but if your person is not on that list, then you need to be calling them like every week. And it doesn't hurt. I mean, sometimes, usually with our rep, Kathy Caster, we go to a bunch of her fundraising events. So that's where we talk to her about being a champion for it. So even if your member of Congress is a co-sponsor, you still want them getting on the case of all of their friends in Congress so that they all get on board. And that's what we mean by champion, championing it. 
you get a chance to meet with your rep in person, that's a great opportunity. All right, well, like I said, I got this event I have to go to tonight. So I'm gonna have to wrap this up, but I loved getting to see you guys, and I'm glad you got to see some of the cats. We will talk to you guys tomorrow, and hopefully tomorrow, everybody will have made the call of the wild. Hey, Cricket.